Breathtaking nature, crystal clear waters and surface paradise. It's Madeira, Portuguese island in the Atlantic Ocean, also known as Gem in the Atlantic or European Bali. I am sure you want to have a great time during your holidays, but don't want to browse through tons of websites looking for the right information of where to eat and what to do. Let me save you some time. I just got back from Madeira and want to share with you must-visit places and must-do activities, what went well during my holidays and what I would have done differently. If you only have a few days in Madeira and want to get the most out of it, continue watching. Is Madeira worth visiting at all? Absolutely, otherwise I wouldn't have done this video, but in all seriousness, I think now it's the right time to visit Madeira, because Madeira is just starting booming versus Bali, for example. Madeira is often compared to Bali, that's why I'm giving this example right now. Bali is already overpriced and overcrowded, telling you as someone who spent two months in Bali last summer. And my prediction is that Madeira will become as popular as Bali in the coming years. It has all the potential to go only up from now on, so catch it now while it's still not as touristy. Let's talk about preparations. Very exciting or not, depending on which personality you are and whether or not you like planning and packing, but let's go over it very quickly so you're prepared for the trip. Number one, driving. In Madeira, there are buses and agencies that will happily organize a trip for you. But if you're like me, who prefer to go at their own pace, I suggest renting a car. We rented a car with Funchal Hire Company. We were very happy with them, very reliable, good value for money. The car was fully insured, which I strongly recommend because Madeira is not as flat as the Netherlands where I live. The roads are curvy and constantly go up and down, so you have to pay attention. And Madeira is definitely not for beginner drivers, so something to consider. Number two, store. If you need groceries or toiletries, go to Continente. Number three, where to stay. We stayed with Airbnb in a place with the kitchen because we like to cook our own breakfast and we also wanted to save up on going out for breakfast every day, which would be like, I don't know, 20 euros a day or so. I like that we stayed close to Funchal, around 15 minute drive, because that allowed us to go out in Funchal if we wanted to, and also allowed us to explore the whole island from a fairly central location. Number four, equipment. Assuming you're a beginner hiker like myself, there are a few things that you might need. Number one, waterproof shoes. Let me show you mine. I have Kuesho shoes. They're good, they could handle morning dew, but after hiking for two hours in Fennel Forest, in a foggy Fennel Forest, my foot um, got wet. They're very comfy in general and good value for money. I think I got them for around 40 euros. But if you want your shoes to be more waterproof, you need to up your budget. If you're planning to hike in the morning or in fluctuating weather conditions, you definitely need gloves and a beanie. I hiked at 7 a.m. in Fennel Forest and I could definitely use gloves and a beanie because it was chilly. During the PR16 hike, my leggings got wet because water was dripping from pretty much everywhere. So for the future, I'm definitely going to buy loose waterproof pants that I can just throw on top of my leggings. In Madeira, you really need layers because if now it's freezing cold, in 15 minutes you might find yourself wearing just a t-shirt. No need to say that you definitely need a backpack, ideally a waterproof backpack. If you want to be advanced, you might definitely think of buying a headlamp. I could use a headlamp in a 1.5 km tunnel, but I did not have one, so I ended up using a torch on my phone and that was just fine as well. If I were to do it again, here is how I would organize a five-day trip. I would start day one with a massage. It's a little bit unrelated to Madeira, but I am sure if you follow it, you would be able to get more out of your trip than you would have otherwise. What I noticed is that my mind and body take a little bit to catch up that I am no longer working, I am on holidays. My body still feels tensed and my mind still thinks that I need to rush somewhere, even if I have nowhere to rush anymore. If I only have five days, I want to speed up the adjustment process and help my body and mind to relax a bit quicker, so I can enjoy my holidays to the fullest. After that, I'd recommend checking out the Monte Palace Tropical Garden in Funchal. Judging by the photos, the place looks exotic. We haven't gone there because it closes at 6 p.m., so we did not have the time, but 
it really looks phenomenal. There is also a cable car to get there, which I think adds to the experience. Since you're already in Funchal, explore the city a little bit. We did, we really liked it. It looks like a modern European city. Really like the vibe. We didn't set any particular goals though, like we want to check this out or that. We didn't, we just enjoyed roaming around and taking it all in. Later you can go to Camara de Lobos, it's on the same coast with Funchal. It's one of the most beautiful fishing villages in the island. After that we had dinner in Ponte do Sol. It's a nice charming town with relaxed atmosphere. We had dinner at a place called Ponte de Sol as well. I drank it 3 out of 5. It was nice for one time, but I would not come back there. However, if you walk along the beach to the right from that restaurant, you will see the most stunning sunset. Yesterday was a good warm-up. It was a good day to familiarize yourself with the island and with surroundings, but now let's get to business. I suggest going for the sunrise in Pico do Ariro and then continuing the hike to Pico do Ruivo. Pico de Ariro is the third highest point in Madeira, 1800 meters. You literally have a feeling when you're up there that you are above the clouds and when you're driving up there it feels like you're driving through the clouds. It's nothing I had ever experienced before simply amazing. It's a 14 kilometer hike in total, so it would probably take you around eight hours. The trail is quite difficult due to an almost 1000 meter incline throughout the return trip. The weather is also quite fluctuating, so it's cold and windy and then sunny and hot, so wear some layers. If you don't want to do the return trip, if you just want to go there and that's it, I have a solution for you. You can get back to your car with a taxi for 60 euros. I'll be honest with you, we haven't completed the hike because we had a flight to catch. Both of us, my boyfriend and I, were thoroughly upset about it. It was one of the best hikes we both have seen in Madeira. It was inspiring to the point that both of us were like, we gotta get back to Madeira to just do this hike in full. I assume that after this hike you would be tired and want to just chill and relax somewhere. I recommend going for dinner in the streets with lots of restaurants in Funchal. I don't know the name of the street, but I will tell you the restaurant. It's called Tasca de Maria. Da Maria. Even if you don't like this restaurant, you will definitely find something to your liking. But at that place, they make the best Nikitas in the whole island and also quite nice ponches. After the challenging hike of yesterday, now you can relax in Seychelles natural pools that also offer a waterfall and beach. If I'm honest, I was more impressed by natural pools of Porta Menis. Porta Menis can offer you two options. One is swimming pool with the ocean water, which feels a little bit less natural, less raw and more commercial. You also have to pay fees to enter. And number two, natural volcanic pools, which is something that we chose because we like more raw and authentic vibe to the place. Some people were wearing water boots because the bottom was uneven and a little bit rocky. I am very sensitive and even I didn't have to wear them, so judge for yourself if you need a pair or not. After that, you can finish your day with a downhill hike called Achadas da Cruz and go back with the cable car. The hike was moderately difficult for us because it was really warm and all the way you just go downhill. All the way down you will see the ocean and a charming local village. If you don't want to hike all the way downhill but still want to see the village and be close to the ocean, which I absolutely don't blame you for, just get a cable car ticket. In the evening my boyfriend and I went to have dinner in Funchal again at another street full of restaurants, but this time neither my boyfriend nor I remember the name. We think it was a Tartaruga or somewhere next to that place, but we're not sure. Anyways, if you get to that street, you will for sure find something that you like because it's just full of restaurants, it's full of life, it's really nice to see. You should definitely check it out. After that, go for ponches. There is a place that makes fairly inexpensive ponches, but they are very delicious. I loved tangerina. It's quite sweet, so exactly the way I like it. A 
along with nature, Madeira is also famous for surfing. Even if you have never tried surfing, why not try it in Madeira? But I completely understand that you, you know, people have their own preferences, their own boundaries. So if you don't want to try surfing, I respect that. So I'll give you two options. Day number four, option with surfing and day number four, option without surfing. So option one with surfing. We surfed twice in Madeira in a place called Porto da Cruz with a school called Sol Team. Bill Miro is the owner of the school and is the best surfer instructor I have ever had. It's not like I'm Kelly Slater, but I surfed a few times and I have data to compare. What's good about this surfing instructor is that he adjusts his style to you. For example, I get stressed when people rush me and he noticed this and at some point he was like, Tanya, you pop up gently and smoothly. And that worked. I will leave the Instagram page below if you want to reach out, say it's from Tanya, say hi, and FYI, this is not sponsored. This is just my genuine suggestion. After surfing, we were thinking about some easy hike next to this place, Porta da Cruz, because don't underestimate surfing. You are two hours in the water, your whole body is working out. So after that, you are a little bit exhausted, to say the least. We were considering PR5, Vireda das Funduras, we started it but one kilometer in we realized that it was a little bit boring it was not a narrow path at least not from the start it was like a road with cars there were quite a few boogie cars and it was just not our vibe in general so we turned back and started um, the hike called PR10 we haven't completed the hike we hiked for approximately two, three kilometers and then we turned back. And I just want to say that it's okay not to finish the hike because we hike in our free time. We hike for fun, it's not a competition. And if you are like us and you still want to enjoy a nice dinner in the evening and you don't want to be completely dead by that time, it's okay to be like, you know, I had a good time, it's enough. I got the most out of this hike let's see something else. Option number two is without the surfing experience. So instead you can explore Livada das 25 Fontes and Risco Waterfall. I'll be honest with you, my boyfriend and I enjoyed this hike the least, but it's very personal. Maybe you will enjoy this hike the most, so don't get discouraged and hear me out. It was the most commercial hike we've done in Madeira in the sense that there was a cafe and there was just a lot of people. Some path was so narrow that you constantly have to stop to let people pass. Some people listen to music during hiking, which is of course fine, but I appreciate it less because then it's hard for me to get what I need to get from my hikes, which is a sense of peacefulness, calmness and relaxation. And um, it's a bit hard for me to get when people smoke or talk loudly or listen to music. I can get this in Eindhoven in the city where I live. I go to Madeira to hike for something else. If these things are fine for you, you're going to enjoy this hike a lot because it's very pretty. Just don't forget your swimwear because you might want to dip in the waterfall at the end of the hike if you're brave enough because the water is just freezing. I'm still glad and grateful that I got to experience this hike. It was still very pleasant. But if I were to do it again, I would probably do PR7 Livade do Moinho or Moino. I don't know how to pronounce it. From what I've read, it sounds like it's a moderately difficult hike. Don't expect stunning views from there. It's more about connecting with nature. Some people even said that it feels like you're in a movie with a lot of trees around, <laughs> whatever it means. But to me, it sounds quite appealing. Anyways, regardless of which option you choose, option number one with surfing, or option number two without, you probably still want to have some dinner after that. It was my birthday in one of the days and my wonderful boyfriend treated me to a perfect dinner. It's definitely on a pricier end, so if you have something to celebrate or you just want to treat yourself and you can afford it, definitely go there. The service was in point, the attention to details, the food was great, the cocktails were delicious, wine, champagne, like everything was chic. I definitely recommend this place and I hope to come back there once again. For this day, I will suggest two hikes. They're both my favorites. So the first one is PR16, Livada Faja do Rodriguez. 
I loved it because it's so green and the air is just so fresh and as, ad as an additional advantage it's an easy one because it's flat. The only challenge there is tunnels. There are three tunnels on this hike and there is no road inside of them. So there is just a narrow path on the side of the tunnel so you have to kind of stick to the side and walk slowly hoping that you're not gonna fall. It's challenging but it's not as bad as I'm explaining. I am clumsy and I am scared of pretty much everything and I still managed to do it. The first two tunnels are fairly short so pretty much anyone can do it but the last tunnel was a real challenge. It takes 1.5 kilometers like I was there for I don't know 20 minutes. The good thing is you don't have to do it though because once you are out in maybe 200 meters you will see the waterfall which is the final destination and then you have to return back. Another good thing about this hike is that you probably are not going to be very tired afterwards so relax a little bit and go for another hike drum roll <laughs> Fanal forest 20 kilometers from the pr16 hike the one with the tunnels is the Fanal forest which is my favorite place in Madeira. We happened to go there twice. The first time we were there for the sunrise and it was not foggy. We were a little bit upset about it because you know, you see pictures, you get inspired and then you want to see it in the same conditions. But in the hindsight, I am very grateful because when the forest is covered in clouds, it's really easy to get lost. And because we have already seen the forest without the fog, we could orient ourselves much better when we were there for the second time. For now, forest is a gem of Madeira. If it's not foggy, it feels like you are in the Lord of the Rings movie. And if it's foggy, it feels like you're in some spooky, mysterious tale. You cannot see much around you, but you can hear. You hear people, cows, but you don't see them. It's a very strange sensation in the best possible way. If you're like us, you also probably want to see forest covered in clouds and probably thinking like what's the recipe for it <laughs> the fog is unpredictable we went there on a rainy day and there was no fog and another time we went on a sunny day and the forest was foggy but don't get disappointed if there is no fog because in my opinion Fennel Forest is just a miracle regardless. For dinner, I recommend a 90 degrees restaurant located in the south coast. Of course, I understand that it depends on where you are based because it might not be practical to drive back and forth. But if you have a chance, check out this place. It's a very cool restaurant. It has glass windows to shield you from the wind. It's overlooking the ocean and it's a wonderful place to watch the sunset. We have come there exactly for this reason, but we did not get a table because we did not have a reservation, so learn from our mistakes. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. I will leave the link to my Instagram in the video description below, or post your question in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next video.